Hello, everybody, and welcome to part two of our epic podcast on the reptilians that goes right down to the Illuminati, Bohemian Grove, Satanism, and the state of the world as we know it. Um, so this is a multi-part episode. This is part two of three, and we decided that um, we would do it this way, not just because of how long it was, but uh, we know that the average duration on our videos is like a half an hour and uh, you know what it makes sense today we don't have a lot of time everything's about bite-sized entertainment so that's what we're trying to give you folks and um, before we jump into the uh, the episode of course I'm your host Bill Pender Ryan Sharp my co-host is here with me and an important little thing here that I have to splice in is that I have just released an album Never thought it would be possible. Just work my ass off it, off on it since Christmas, um, before the birth of my new son. Just take the 30 seconds to watch it, and uh, I want to give you guys some free stuff. All you have to do is go on to my Facebook page, Will Pender Rocks, and like and share the post titled Will Pender Bad Wiring. I'll send you a free track, ringtone, wallpaper. Just check it out. I hope you guys dig it. Guys, I hope you dug that, and I want you to spread it like the plague. Like it, share it. Um, I just want as many people as I can to hear it and enjoy it. And, of course, if you do so, you can um, not only get the free stuff, but I'm giving away free copies of the whole album as well at random. And uh, you can also buy it at willpender.net, and it will be on iTunes and all the, the regular online music stores um, by the end of next week. And with that said, let us jump back into the topic of the reptilians. Yeah, they they started out by doing the work themselves, and at some point there was a revolt amongst the Anunnaki, and they said, fuck this, we're not digging holes in the ground anymore, and you're going to have to find another way to do this. And then uh, Enki devised a way of doing it by performing a bunch of experiments on... Um, the most advanced creature at the time, which, you know, is debatable. What was it? Gynopithecus, Homo erectus, uh, whatever. It was some basically early did hominid. a lot of stuff with DNA. Yes, right? yes. Um, and the result of that being the creation of, of the human race. Exactly. And so. And, and to drive that point home, there have been. You just look at the human fascination with gold throughout the history of of mankind it, you know you i won't go into this too deep but if you're really interested just just start googling about you know why we're so interested in gold and why gold has been so important to us there's been reports of possible gold mines in africa dating back 100 to 200,000 years and and some claims go back even further now th the most uh um outrageous uh, uh, well not outrageous but you know the 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 furthest out estimates of the appearance of the first modern human beings homo sapien sapien that's us it happened they say the furthest back they push it is around 200,000 years so if they're finding gold mines that are older than that, then that's that's really saying something. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, if where we can get with just this this line of thought right here, I mean, uh, so Zachariah Sitchin, you know, he, he he's basically finds out that uh, these Anunnaki come here, and and they basically the reason why they do that. To us, they, they splice our DNA is that we were too stupid to work for them. They couldn't enslave us and make us do work because we were too stupid. So they, they had to tool us to do that. And then they, they set us off to create these great cities and, and, and stuff like that. 
And and I the mean, idea was that they hybrid, they hybrid, or they attempted to hybrid us with a whole plethora of other creatures on this planet. They, and by us I mean early hominids. So before we were humans, our stupid meandering ancestors got spliced a bunch of times with all kinds of different creatures, and and this is the reason why we have all these stories of. Centaurs, minotaurs, mermaids, birdmen, wh- what have you? That's well, that, that, that's, that's, that's one that's right. of the there's theories. Apparently, there's apparently like four different groups right now. I mean, you got the the Mothmen, you got the Draconians, uh, which, by the way, is supposedly uh, Luciferian. Like L- Lucifer is supposed to be a Draconian, and you know you have well, he's the, referred uh, the, to as the dragon in the Bible, is he not? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, the dragon, and then you got the gray. So like. Uh, so eventually they settled on the only the the uh, the last thing they tried was mixing our and early ancestors dna with theirs to create us yes which is why we're so fucking dysfunctional (laughs) and so like you know that's basically what we were was tunnel diggers right and um you know this even branches off again. It, I'm not going to really get into this, but in theistic Satanism, Enkai was Lucifer, the shining one, and he, and he was Satan. He was the fallen angel, and he was the one that came and gave us, you know, the information. You know, the the you know in the Bible, the the symbolic nature of eating that apple and getting all information. You know that that is apparently what it was symbolic of was Enki coming here and giving us knowledge we were never meant to have but they enslaved us right and so i mean that's a whole different uh kit and caboodle right yeah oh strap in folks for the uh divergences and uh uh, off track uh conversations for tonight (laughs) (laughs) yeah this is this is first time we actually sat down together and so I i think we got a lot of stuff going a lot of different ways but um, I guess to get back to uh, to your initial question, like, you know, why there is, um, I guess, why people on, on the TV and stuff like that would have these moments where their their eyes are flickering, you can see the cat eyes, you can see the, the, the morphing, and they can't hold the, the image. They seem to be spazzing out a little bit. Right, and, and the way that that is said to be is that, like the hierarchy that we were talking about, there's, um, you know, there's this bloodline, right? I mean, the the grand idea is that there's going to be this new world order, right? And basically, there's going to be one person that rules them all. So even though they're all, you know, in these different groups and they're all working together, somebody is supposed to be the Antichrist that's going to come and they're going to rule them all. And the thing that I should mention right up front right now is that on the topic of the reptilians, just like people, uh, there's good and bad, right? Yes. So in the reptilian way, there's a Luciferian, um, was it, uh, what's the word? It's the Luciferian, uh, Druid or hanging out. I'm thinking like RPGs here. <laughs> um, but anyway, there's, there's like the Luciferian way. Right, and that's the the evil. Um, it's almost like Sith, right? It's like you know, if I can take your shit and kill you, then you deserve it because I'm better than you. Might makes right. Might makes right. And then there's these, um, you know, apparently it's a, it's a race that has been kind of brainwashed anyway, and and kind of into this idea. But there are just like there are people in the world right now waking up to the um, the illusions that we see on TV and the brainwashing and the media. You know, there are um, apparently reptilians to do that, too. There are the same ones that um, are in UFOs above nuclear uh, silos that stopped them from going. I've even heard reports of uh, reptilians that have shown up in strange ships alongside uh, fighters on Dulce and have actually protected, uh, you know, the the people flying the ships. So, um, you know, they're not all bad, right? Uh, But... What we have going on, we got different races of reptilians. We have, uh, you know, well, and not, not just races, but different factions within each caste, right? And, and, di- and different castes who have you. You would imagine. I mean, look at 
our the, the way that we're set up. I mean, if this is a reality that we're dealing with, and I mean, I won't lie, there certainly does seem to be a very strong correlation between um, human beings and our existence and this whole hidden reality of the reptilian. If, if this is the reality of the world that we're living in, then the fact that we're so much like them, if they've been around behind the scenes for so long, shouldn't come as a surprise. So when we look at situations um, like, you, I know you just briefly mentioned Dulcie. Um, I'm sure it's something we'll go into a little deeper in a little bit. But when we look into any of these situations, you, I would imagine personally that not only are there they're different just like amongst human beings right we have caucasians and we have africans and we have asians and then outside of that um the reptilians might have their own kind of slightly uh, uh, um, differentiated uh, morphology within their own race and then within that there's all the there may be all these different ideologies on top of the fact that what pops up time and time again, that amongst the reptilians, that there's an entire caste system. So even amongst the caste system, there may be different ideologies and factions within those caste systems. There's no reason to think that their society is any less um, complicated than our own. I mean, just look at how messed up the world is, right? That's because n no two people can agree on anything. And, you know, we tend to try and find like-minded individuals and we form groups um, around ideological centers. And I think the same could be said in terms for any advanced social species. And I think that a lot of the confusion that comes from this topic may in fact come from from that imagine chimpanzees become conscious tomorrow and their anthropologists have the the arduous task of trying to map out human interactions and what it means to be human and what the right human belief is right it'd be impossible and that's what we're trying to do we are, and like the, the thing about the reptilians, I mean, if, if you look at it, and you're, you're going to, I mean, no matter how you look at it, is either they were here first, or they came down here, and we weren't as advanced as them. I mean, every different angle of the story says that they were technologically advanced, and they taught us, right? I mean, every angle says that they were the superior being, and they probably feel that way. They probably feel like we were... Um, you know, in the wrong place, like we, we went to their land, like we're, we're the intruders, right? But they probably also realize that we're, because they're superior, it's easier to manipulate and to get us to do the work that they want done, right? So, I mean, if we're going to look at um, the whole idea of like ensl enslaving the human race and like w what their ultimate goal is, um, because that's what it is, is apparently to enslave the human race and that the earth belongs to them. And the word is that they've been controlling the human race since ancient times. Right? Now, and I mean, do you make any connection between draconians and saurians? Saurians I haven't heard of. So, <laughs> so the idea of the saurians is that um, saurians are basically, they're not, they're, they're, they're crypto terrestrials. That meaning that they've been on Earth for the last, you know, 600 million years since the end of the dinosaurs. That during the dinosaur age, that an, an advanced, bipedal, intelligent race of beings evolved. And any evidence of their civilization has long been wiped away. Um, and some schools of thought think this is where the reptilians came from that they're not actually extraterrestrials they're crypto terrestrials and that during times of great upheaval they went deep underground and then eventually remained there 
Okay, well, I, I did hear of the reptilians uh, living underground. Just I didn't hear the the name Saurians. They just re- being descendant re- of dinosaurs. That they're that they're from Earth. They're Earthlings as much as we're Earthlings, except they've been here for millions of years. Um, underground. Underground, for the most part. Yeah, well, I have heard that said, uh, just not the, the term Saurian, but just reptilian as a general blanket term. Because there's, uh, there's another school of thought that the Saurians were actually completely separate from the Draconians, that the Saurians it developed and evolved on this planet. Some left, some went underground, the rest died. And then later, when the Draconians showed up, um, that they kind of incorporated whatever was left here of the Saurian people into their caste. Oh, that that very well could be. Now, now, like, I mean, um, I'm not sure what their role would be in the hierarchy, but I do know that, like, I mean, just let's let's just shift this a little bit into like when we're talking about enslaving humanity, and like once we get to this elitism, we have to start bringing up who these elites are. Uh, sure. And like for that, it, a lot of people refer to them as the Illuminati. Now, the Illuminati. Is not just reptilians, you know. It's humans as reptilians is a, is a secret group, right? But like the the thing that I guess binds them is a bloodline, right? Is this ancient bloodline and going right back to Samaria, if you believe some some uh, um, um, family trees. Exactly, it, it goes right back to ancient Samaria, and apparently there's a lot of inbreeding between like say royal families and, and stuff like that to keep the bloodline pure right I mean that that's what it's all about and like so for example not uh, only to keep it pure but there is a whole kind of sub anthropological study on what is believed to be a some uh, in 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 some pseudo scientific circles um, to be a whole subclass or, or other uh, slightly different type of human being, one that's born with, with with literally no empathy whatsoever. What what us us normals call a sociopath. Oh man, it goes even further than that. Like I mean, if if you go in and uh, I was listening to a um, an interview with David Icke, and you know, like the in Hollywood in the political circles like in Bohemian Grove another thing we're going to get into there's this whole circle of like um pedophilia and and like just vile not, not just pedophilia but like ritualistic necrophilia pedophilia necrophilia but a lot of the pedophilia seems to be connected to um mind control as well that, oh for sure that like by par- utilizing that kind of early childhood sexual abuse that you start splintering personalities and when if you splinter the personalities enough then you can bury information deep into some of these really damaged personalities that can only be brought out under very specific conditions uh, and that's not, the that be the mk ultra program yeah and the the other thing that they uh, apparently like and i and i've heard this mentioned in other um occult rituals like certain groups um the reason why they would target children is that for you know these reptilians um like there is a certain kind of chemical uh yes that is reduced with fear or it comes it, out with fear it's only and, produced in 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 the flesh of a, a human being and typically m- more uh a, a more large amount of it in a in a young human child when they're under ext- in extreme fear and pain, right, and it's nourishing to them to their uh, build. Not and only then- nourishing to them, but now I've 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 heard certain circles regard it as the secret to unlocking um, uh, psychic potential in human beings. So that not only is this a practice being done by reptilian non-human creatures. But there are certain cults that have formed around this idea. Um, the ones that I know of particularly happened in England, where the remains of these children, once they were d- discovered, 
were were almost impossible to identify as even being human by the right. time I, you know the I mean it's absolutely cults. disgusting uh, what oh you know revolting from, from a, in the in the extreme like especially for us humans to look at it i mean it, it's absolutely disgusting so i mean let, let's put a face to some of these names right i mean we got george bush is an alleged uh reptilian bill and hillary clinton uh, Queen Elizabeth, you know, you have the royals, you have, um, uh, I mean, the, the big, you know, the big guys, the guys who like run the world already. Is you got the Rothschild and the, um, uh, what's the other one? The um, Rockefellers. The Rockefellers, right? And I mean, they, they're at the head table of this stuff. You know, they're, they're the ones that pull the strings behind the curtain. And you just you go know? ahead. You just go ahead and pause this podcast for, for two seconds and and Google a picture of David Rockefeller, um, and tell me he doesn't look like a subhuman, fucking I don't know what. Like the guy just has this air of of menace and evilness about him. He looks like a predator. He does, and and you know if you're wondering, you know how these elitists, how how do they rule the human race right now? Well. I mean that ties into many other other conspiracies as well. Uh, the, the idea, the deepest of which, and this is this is my take on it, was that we were designed from the ground up to desire to be led. Yeah, <laughs> you know that. There you go. Right, but I mean, think I, of how many people that you know who do not want to take control of their own own lives or make their own decisions. Uh, they'd much rather have somebody calling the shots for them. Well, it's right in our culture. Like, everything about it. I mean, the uh, the idea that we're programmed from the top. You know, this is done with political sway. It's done with laws. It's done with uh, drugging of our food, with pesticides and other chemicals, uh, our water. All of which fall under, um, you know, chemtrails and shit like that. I mean, that's a whole other conspiracy. And the, the um, trillion dollar social engineering business that yeah, it mean, is usually referred to as marketing. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's the other big thing is that all these people own the news. They own the TV. Like, uh, Well, you, never- you look at it. There's what? There's six, seven companies that own all the different news agencies in the world. Right. And one of them being Disney. One thing, you know, I mean j- just to put this out there. I mean, it's not like people haven't stumbled across this before and tried to make a difference, right? And I'm going to give you a really good example of something like that right now. Every everybody talks about John F Kennedy and like, you know, the the assassination and and what caused that. Well, here's an example or an excerpt of one of his speeches that many p- people believe is actually cl- um, connected to the Illuminati. And this, this is the excerpt. This is his words. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. We are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths and secret proceedings. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies on covert means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidations instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Uh, You will never hear this situation more succinctly explained than, than those words. It's everything. It's everything. They own everything. We are apps like everything that we need, our resources, uh, our news, our just it's completely infested and contaminated and shapes your life in a way that it, it is like you're well, we're locked completely into it. reliant for food, shelter, work, medicine, everything. Everything, yet, your entertainment, everything is completely reliant on this huge megastructure 
that when you really get in and you really look deep, the the people who are making your medicine, like uh, what is it, Bayer's, right? They make all kinds. They're a huge pharmaceutical company, but they're also a huge agro company. So not only do they make make the food that gives you a headache, but they make the drugs that take your headache away. And and they completely manipulate um, like the the media, like the news you hear. I mean, I've even seen there's been lots of stuff lately where like these terrorist attacks happen, and people have been noticing that at different uh, terrorist uh, or like you know shootings or whatever that they have these same families. Oh, cr- people, crisis actors! Crisis actors, right? The same people in these videos acting freaked out, but they play a different role every time and because the internet is so big people are seeing that hey this thing that happened over in iraq and this is the same woman uh over here claiming to be this person's husband in the u.s and like the, same the, one. the uh the oh what was it seal team six that were was in, involved in taking down osama bin laden um is reportedly and i mean i've seen the photographs and it seems pretty damning to me that those same guys, SEAL Team Six, um, were the were members of the high school football team during the Columbine shooting. Right. I mean, it, it's there. It's just it seems so crazy that this could be a thing. It's like nobody wants to believe it. Nobody wants to look, but it's fucking there. Hiding right? in plain sight. It's hiding in plain sight, and like it's not even hard to find. It's just that you know we've kind of been. You got to know to look. <laughs> you got to know to look. Now, the only thing is, now the biggest mistake the government ever made was to put the internet out for the public because they had us in a way before the internet there was you were just lost. It was like it was like the equivalent of the matrix. You're just fed, you know, this is the world you see, this is all you know. All you had was radio and TV and there was no input by the common man. And they owned it. <laughs> Right, so you were gonna see and think and hear what they told you, and even though that's a big part of today, because of the internet, you have all these groups that are waking up and and pointing this out and pointing that out, and there there's people waking up every day and you know seeing that there's more going on than they you know there's a secret world behind the world we live in. So and they've had to switch they've had to switch tactics over the last fifteen years, and. The result of that now being is that the best thing that they can do is just muddy the waters. And that's why whenever you're out there looking up anything on anything, you really need to pay attention and you really need to dig, go far and wide. Because for every piece of, for every single piece of true information that you're going to find on the internet, you're going to find 10 bits of disinformation. And, and some of it is purposeful, groups. and some of it is... Exactly. They have hired groups, offices of people, and that's what all they do, is they go and spread disinformation. Because if there's enough bullshit out there with enough of the real stuff, it's like nobody knows what to look at. And if there's things that are obvious bullshit that are somewhat similar to true stuff, you just you, you throw you it all, out, all throw the throw the baby out with the bathwater. Exactly. And so, I mean, let's just, like, look at this bloodline, right? I mean, we got, uh, it's a royal bloodline. And apparently, uh, you know, there was a very thorough genealogy resource that ties all, I mean, all 44 U.S. presidents to this royal bloodline. Uh, Which, if true, by the way, means that the public voting we do, this free choice that we think we have is just an illusion. Oh, fuck, Uh, if voting made any difference whatsoever... They wouldn't let us do it. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, they, they know who they're putting in, uh, you know, before it happens. And apparently the way that it works is is determined by the, you know, the order of the percentage of the royal genes that somebody has. Um, you know, and, and other big actors who are said to have these genes are Marilyn Monroe, Madonna, Tom Hanks, and others. Uh, I mean, this even ties back to Vlad the Impaler, right? The, the now, bloodline... Now, I, I once once upon a time, I haven't been able to find it in years, but maybe 11 years ago, 
I came across a family tree, bloodline family tree, um, that went right back to Roman times. Um, and there were a few little bits of it that that just dipped back into late uh, dynastic Egypt. Well, it's interesting that you say that because according to David Icke, um, the global elite follow an ancient religion and the religion is actually secretly tied to the Catholic religion, right? Roman Catholic religion. And uh, it's apparently similar to what we see in satanic cults, like where blood is involved, sacrifices, orgies, bizarre rituals, and chanting. And just to get an idea of what this religion really is, and I'm not saying the Catholic as we know it is like that, but, um, you know, the, the stuff that these elitists practice, right? Go do a search on YouTube for Bohemian Grove, right? And there, there's footage apparently captured by Alex Jones, and I know what <laughs> a lot of people's opinion is on him, but seriously, just take a look at the footage, right? I mean, uh, Bohemian Grove is another huge conspiracy all on its own, and apparently what it is is that it's this place where all the world's elite group up, they have orgies, they have sacrifices, they perform ancient rituals, and they all worship this giant owl that they call Moloch. Moloch. And I mean, and Moloch, I believe, is a Babylonian deity. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy, right? And I mean, you can watch the videos. I mean, there's been pictures of uh, of people high in politics there taking part in this, wearing weird garbs. And, and it's, and it's um, not just politics. It's like leaders of industry, the head of Kodak, the head of Co- uh, um, Canon, the the head of Hewlett Packard, the head of, you know, Ford. It's on top of the, the elites and the... Um, you know the political elites and and now the one thing i'm not sure of i don't think there's ever there's ever been a celebrity filmed at a bohemian grove event has there not uh, to my knowledge i'm not sure but the thing like the a thing media I've, celebrity you know rock star or fucking actor or whatever well they they could very well be you know if, if we're going to hierarchy they could be beneath that but i mean truthfully they're just the um, clowns of the uh of the bloodline <laughs> right yeah Go i mean they're there and entertain the populace keep them distracted you know uh, yeah that get, would make sense wouldn't it if it, we're it would. if we're if we're just dirt beneath their boots the, the people that we look up to is basically i mean let's face it in in north america um the the top actors and actresses and and performers are north american royalty right we don't have dukes and duchesses and 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 kings and queens in north america but we look up to these celebrities as as these these semi divine beings. People cry and shit themselves when they meet them in person, right? Right. And and the look and, and the really you know you really pull your perspective back. If this is the 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 hierarchy or the way that that things are set up, um, then they literally would be at the bottom because they're just there. They're just the guy that was hired to dangle keys in front of the human race and exactly. shake them. Exactly. Hey, look over here. Basically, they're the guys like, hey, come distract people. We'll pay a shit ton of money. We'll have people write your music. They'll do your advertising. They'll do your... App. You'll have a life of uh, awesomeness, right? You, you'll have this awesome, easy life, and we'll do it for you. We just need a front man to go and like you said dangle the keys right? we just need someone without scales to uh yeah they, go, <laughs> go shake the shiny eyes thing, right and, and meanwhile uh, within the music the people writing it of course aren't you know you find that funny right most of these artists uh they're not the ones writing it there's someone behind there and there's always like these little things that they're they're pushing in there that could serve the agenda of, a lot of uh, messianic symbols uh, yeah, that, that's something that you'll see What's a lot it, of times. Uh, that guy, fucking uh, Jay Z. Yeah, well, and Beyonce, uh, all of them. Like, if you go and Google, I mean, that's a conspiracy. Well, they're married, aren't they? They are. Yeah. And and if you Google this this whole uh, uh, thing, you'll see that there's all these symbols being made. And remember how I said that there's supposedly uh, Luciferian 
you know, the, the reptilians and stuff like that, then it would make sense that the people who are working on that angle of it are flashing uh, these satanic symbols. Of course they are. That's the side they're on. You know, that's part of their hierarchy. That's the, the group they serve. Satanism and the state of the world as we know it. Um, so this is a multi-part episode. This is part two of three. And we decided that um, we would do it this way, not just because of how long it was, but uh, we know that the average duration on our videos is like a half an hour. And uh, you know what? It makes sense. Today, we don't have a lot of time. Everything's about bite-sized entertainment. So that's what we're trying to give you folks. And um, before we jump into the uh, the episode, of course, I'm your host, Bill Pender, Ryan Sharp. My co-host is here with me. And an important little thing here that I have to splice in is that I have just released an album. Never thought it would be possible. Just work my ass off it, off on it since Christmas. Um, before the birth of my new son, just take the 30 seconds to watch it, and uh, I want to give you guys some free stuff. All you have to do is go on to my Facebook page, Will Pender Rocks, and like and share the post titled Will Pender Bad Wiring. I'll send you a free track, ringtone, wallpaper. Just check it out. I hope you guys dig it. Thank you, no. Hello everybody and welcome to part two of our epic podcast on the reptilians that goes right down to the Illuminati Bohemian Grove. And with that said, let us jump back into the topic of the reptilians. Yeah, they they started out by doing the work themselves and at some point there was a revolt amongst the Anunnaki and they said fuck this, we're not digging holes in the ground anymore. And you're going to have to find another way to do this. And then uh, Enki devised a way of doing it by performing a bunch of experiments on um, the most advanced creature at the time, which, you know, is debatable. What was it? Gynopithecus, Homo erectus, uh, whatever it was. <laughs> Guys, I hope you dug that, and I want you to spread it like the plague. Like it, share it. Um, I just want as many people as I can to hear it and enjoy it. And, of course, if you do so, you can um, not only get the free stuff, but I'm giving away free copies of the whole album as well at random. And uh, you can also buy it at willpender.net, and it will be on iTunes and all the, the regular online music stores um, by the end of next week.